Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy. I'm with Touch of Class Creations. I'm here today to do a quick how-to video on making a sublimation cup with a Dollar Tree two for a dollar reusable coffee cups. These you can find at Dollar Tree. They're two for a dollar. They do have sayings on them. Uh, I got the ones with the lightest saying, rise and grind. There was some that have darker sayings. Um, but in any event, this is how the cups look. It came out really nice. This is my first cup that I actually tried. Um, did Pennywise, I made a Pennywise mask. So I was like, let me try these cups and see if we can make this work. Um, other than the cup, you're gonna need the Dollar Tree cup. You'll need some vinyl. I'm gonna use white Oracle 651. You need some thermal laminating pouches or uh, laminating sheets, whatever you wanna use. This is what I'm using tonight, uh, Scotch thermal laminating pouches. So you basically take one pouch, it comes like this for those that don't know or have it. And you can see there's a gap right at the top and all you have to do basically is tear the sheet in half and you need one sheet. You can save the other sheet for later. When using these, just to let you know now before I switch camera views, there's a shiny side and then there's a matted dull side, which is kind of hard to see in the camera. That's duller. This is shinier and clearer. So this is the side you want facing up. You want the matted side down. In person, you'll be able to tell which side is which pretty easy. Um, and then you need sublimation paper and a sublimation printer. Obviously, I'm going to be using uh, text print R paper and a Sawgrass SG400 as my sublimation. And then I'm using a Silhouette um, Cameo 4, which I just got yesterday, and I will be putting a unboxing video and first cut video with that. So let's get started on making a Dollar Tree cup, uh, to-go coffee cup, uh, sublimated with uh, Oracle vinyl and polyester. Okay, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. We're gonna go to, um, if you already have the template open or you have the file, you're gonna have it open here. If not, you're gonna create it or if you get it from my Etsy store, you're gonna open the file in your Silhouette or in your Cricut. Uh, and so I am already got it as the Dollar Tree cup template, so I'm going to double click it and load it into my system here. And once it's in the system, uh, it's already sized up and set for how it needs to be for me, which um, uh, once again, I have a template that has it all sized for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, I have a dual screen setup, so I'm going to try and move my camera here. This might look a little choppy, so I apologize. But uh, you see here I have a file open, and I'm going to take my picture I want to use for my cup, which I'm going to make a Pennywise picture like the other cup I showed you. So I'm simply going to drag this from my folder over to Silhouette, which I'll leave my screen paused here. For a minute so I, I simply dragged it into here um, I'll, I'll come back over here and let you see it come in so I'm coming over from my older folder onto this screen now you can see the Pennywise the way I have the photo the quality of it it takes up the whole screen all I'm gonna do is continue to drag it into where my template was and you can see it'll automatically size the photo to the template for you um, if you have text you want to put on the cup I suggest you put the text on your photo, um, as you could see, try not to get my head in the video, the photo I had on here, this is the actual photo. It was just a square normal photo. Um, the program silhouette and the template I put in there will automatically size the cup. It'll turn the image and any text you have to what it needs to be to where when you put that curved template on the cup, it actually wraps around the cup straight. So in any event, so now I have my image on the cup. Uh, I'm simply going to print it to my sawgrass. So I'm gonna go down to print and I'm gonna go to my sawgrass manager here, sawgrass print manager. I'm gonna go ahead and hit print. We see it's gonna go ahead and print it over to my sawgrass. 
So I'm going to minimize that. Don't mind the mess on my computer screen here. I have a, a million trillion things. I think, there we go. My print manager is going to come up right there. So if you guys use Sawgrass, you're familiar with this. The image always looks kind of cruddy over here. It doesn't look the way it's going to look. But I always come over to color and um, make sure my color share is set. You can have disabled or color share. Color share will make sure your colors match. And my screen over here, the colors aren't true to my actual computer screen. This is a TV monitor I have set up for my split screen. So don't mind the way that looks. Um, but uh, depending on the photo I'm using, sometimes I like photographic. Sometimes I like vivid. And sometimes I like graphic. Graphic I'll use for more for graphics, photographs for more pictures. And then um, vivid for kind of in the middle. And I think in this one I like vivid. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit print. And then I'm going to rotate the camera into my mess of a desk here. And you'll see. Here we go. Picture's finished. And you see. Vivid. That's how it came out. It looks pretty nice to me. Colors look good. Eyes look kind of spooky. So let's go on to the next step. So now we're going to go back over the silhouette. I'm going to minimize that. Don't mind my head that popped in there. So now I want to go to here. And it doesn't matter if it has the image or not on here when you send it to your vinyl because... Um, it's going to cut the vinyl regardless of what shows in this image, if it's a color, if it's blank, if it's white, or if it's whatever. So uh, don't worry about the image being on there. Now, once again, I'm going to hand cut the image with scissors because the last time I did print and cut, the machine cut off by like an eighth of an inch on this corner and an eighth of an inch on that corner, which then gave me a line all around. So in any event, when you cut your vinyl, you want to make sure you have your vinyl selected, make sure it's on cut. You want to make sure you have the right material, which this isn't set right. So I'm going to put it on, um, on vinyl mat because I'm using a white mat vinyl. I'm going to go get the machine set up. I'm going to stop the video. But once the machine's set up, um, this will turn to available. And then when you're ready to cut, you're just going to come here and hit send. Uh, I'm going to change the camera around so you won't see that when I do go to send it. I'm going to get it set up so you can see the vinyl cutter cutting in the next step. So uh, here we go. Okay, I had to cut the last video. Hopefully it didn't pause too bad. I had to change a couple things on my machine real quick to get the settings correct. wasting any vinyl here and apologize I have to turn on this light I hope it doesn't blare out the camera but I'm just going to before I read it I'm going to cut away my excess vinyl which I'm sure most everyone here does I'm not rich so I always use my scrap vinyl although we have so much scrap vinyl and heat transfer vinyl especially that a lot of times I'll cut this with my cutter to have straight lines so it's easier to use. But in this case, I'm just for the video purposes cutting it out quick. I'll trim it up and make it look nice later. So that's how I, I don't know about the roll cutter because I would have used scrap maybe for this or something else. But we're going to... Um, yeah, we can see your lead right around here. I don't even know how the new settings look at my new silhouette. There we go. I didn't know if the cut settings cut right. It wasn't peeling right away, as you can see. Here we are, I love. I haven't used this before yet, so I just don't know about the settings. I haven't had a real chance to play around with it, as you can see my line here. It doesn't look like it cuts super smooth. Not the perfect thing I want to happen when I'm making a happy video, but there we go. Plus, it's orange out, so you know that stuff looks good. Here is the vinyl all cut out for the template. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can get it in there. Oh, I shouldn't have put that away. This we're going to cut on the cutter as well, which we'll do that in a minute. This I'm going to cut out with scissors. So I will spare you having to watch this as I do the whole thing. I will do it in the video so y'all can see. But I'm going to cut out with scissors. Now, 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 I'm going to cut out with scissors. Now,
Uh, I will put it in fast motion so you don't really have to watch me. So, here we go. We're going to cut this bad boy out as straight as we can. Yeah, I mean, once again, it's all relative. I, I cut a little bit off the edge of there, so this may not align perfectly on the, um... And actually, you don't even need to cut this image out, you know, because technically you're going to be laying this over the vinyl, so you can just line it up to the vinyl. Uh, I'm going to actually take it onto the vinyl, so I'm going to cut it anyways. But, uh, because I'm going to just a lot forward. But, in any event, these are a cut that we got for fairly inexpensive, and it's a pretty decent quality, I think. I'm just laying it on, so most likely I will cut all this out. But you can see here's my cutout. So that's pretty close anyways. You'll see if the machine would have cut it, it would have done the same thing. But you can see the printout for the template goes perfectly on this. And you see if I take an actual cup, this is when I was messing with it the other night, that's ink from my my prints when I was making the template but you'll see if you put the template up to the cup right here or the paper as I fold it all the way around you'll see it comes and makes a perfect wrap around the cup it's actually a little extra which I made it a little big because the machines tend to be a little funky so you can always trim off a little bit of the edge if you want or you can have it overlap whichever way you want to do it um, but it's better to have the template be slightly big than slightly small because then you have to stretch. So there we have the vinyl cut and we have the uh, sublimation cut for the vinyl, which we will do after you do this. We have to attach the, 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 the laminate paper to the vinyl first and then put that on here. Now let me tell you, you can actually, when I did this cup, I made the mistake and I didn't press... Um, I didn't press the, the laminate to this strong enough, or, or I pressed this, I pressed this first on this one and didn't use the laminate and it came out super dull. As you can see here, here's what, this is why we use the laminate. If you don't use the laminate, it's going to be dull like this instead of shiny like that. This is a sublimation sheet as well, which of course it didn't have the heat. If you look at the back of this sublimation sheet, and any of you that have made the, the Dollar Tree cutting boards know how that process works. The ink sublimates through to the other side of the sticky side. You can see the sticky side looks nice and colorful. The outside looks dull. So that's why we use the laminate sheet. You can press it on the laminate sheet first and then attach it to the vinyl, which I didn't know, but the image will stick on the laminate sheet. I had this sheet actually off separated from the cup, just the laminate sheet, and it had that image on here. And then I had to repress it to a new piece of vinyl because when I initially pressed it, this was the vinyl I had cut and, and I didn't press it long enough temperature. So just a word of advice to tell you, do not press it onto the Oracle without the laminate sheet because it will be dull like that, okay? Matted and dull, so. That being said, let's go ahead and set up to cut the laminate sheet real quick. I'm gonna do shiny side up because I don't wanna put the shiny side on the sticky mat. I'll have the dull side on there. So I'm gonna line this up. It's pretty thin, so it's a little harder to line up perfectly. But that'll do. So you're gonna cut this the same way you did the final, except for your settings is going to be set um, on sticker paper clear in any event let's continue on so now we're going to go ahead and send it to the machine once again it's with the sticker paper settings so the machine will go ahead and try and uh, run the cut twice on the material to make sure the sticker paper is cut accurately and smoothly All right, so the cameo is done. We're going to take it off. Now you can see, I'm going to peel the outside of the transfer sheet first. Now I may use this other stuff to make stickers, this outside laminate sheets and whatnot. So I don't throw this away because with the cutter, of course, you can still cut out anything just like you would with vinyl with this uh, remaining pieces if you want to make stickers for your kids or for 
other projects or whatever. So I'm just going to stick that off to the side. I'm going to get this off of here. So now we are done with the machines. And I should have heated my heat press up in advance and I didn't. So I'm going to go and do that, pause the video, and then we can start the process of adhering the transfer paper to the heat press and put the image on. So we'll see you at the heat press. Okay, so you're going to heat your heat press up to 400 degrees. Uh, I do mine at 395. Um, because it's always worked for me and I just have, so for whatever reason, but 400 degrees for about 20 seconds for your laminate sheet. And then you're gonna do it like your normal sublimation when you put your sublimation sheet on this and do it for the 60 seconds that you normally would. So um, this is my Heat Press Nation uh, Signature Series 15 by 15 uh, Swing Away with the Sure Pressure system, um, awesome heat press. Uh, if you guys know anything about Heat Press Nation, they do a great job. The heat press is rock. And this one uh, I just got, I ordered at the same time I ordered my Cameo Plus. The Cameo, this came in uh, a couple weeks ago. The Cameo Plus just came in the other day, uh, Sunday. So we only have two days. So once again, you want your shiny side up on your laminate. So I'm just going to eye this up here. You can heat tape it if you want. I usually do heat tape the, um, the sublimation to the laminate, but I don't want my laminate to be wrinkly on my, um, on my other shoe, so I'm just going to use a new piece of parchment paper. Probably use my silicone cover, but I don't want to. I'm going to just smooth my laminate. Be careful when you're doing it. If you're not going to tape it, not to slide your laminate off. So. So I have my timer set for 60 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and um, just watch it and stop it at 20 seconds. So. And my pressure is you want medium firm pressure. Um, if you have a, a, a press like me, you would have that uh, set at 53 is what I found to be medium firm pressure. So you could do whatever is, is good for you, but 53 is what I've found. So 20 seconds are up. I'm going to go ahead and swing my heat press away. Now, of course, be careful because it's going to be very hot and very sticky. So now, make sure it's good there. Yep, very hot. Now my laminate sheet's stuck. So I'm going to see if I can do this without taping it. Last time I did tape it on here, but I'm just going to see if I can eye it up and lay it across. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I just put a piece of heat tape uh, right here and right here. The two seconds it took me to do that is really more worth it than to not do it and to risk, you know, when you lift up your press, the image slides, risk ghosting the image possibly or doing anything that could mess it up. So why not take the two seconds? So you have your vinyl here. You see the image is face down. The Texar print paper is face down on the vinyl. And then we're going to put our parchment paper to cover it up. And we're going to now press this for 60 seconds. At 400 degrees, I've got mine set for 395, but either way, 395, 400. If you know your press, you should know what you normally do your sublimation at, and that would probably give you the correct temperature for that. So now when this finishes here in, um, in 20 seconds or so, 12 seconds to be exact, I'll just keep the camera here and undo it here, that way you can see it so I don't have to switch the camera back and forth and keep stopping, so you can see it actually as it's hot. Coming off, of course, when you first get it done and off here, it's gonna be very hot, so be careful, of course. I can see already looking through here that you can see looking on the outside that the Pennywise image, it's steaming, is showing through there already. So that's good. That's how you want it. Let me adjust this down a little bit. Sorry. I'm using a whole new tripod system, so please forgive 
that I cut my head off for this. So now we're just going to grab our paper and peel our sublimation paper off there. I don't know why my corners sticking a little bit right there. I don't think I pulled it completely off. You can see now, here is the Pennywise image nice and clean on your polyester. In the meantime, let me show you how I apply the vinyl, what I find to be the easiest way. So here's your cup you're going to use. Now, I um, try to put this rise and grind on the opposite side of the main image um, because once again, if you look at the cup in a lot of lighting, you can't see it from here, but you can. I can see looking where I'm at the rise and grind um, very faintly, but you can see it in the cup. So um, maybe you can clean them off and get it off there. Maybe most people probably won't even notice unless I told you, but my thing is I put this on the back side. So I'm going to take um, two things and have my cup. Actually, this is a little bit big. Take uh, two pairs of scissors and set my cup in between them so it just kind of keeps the cup from rolling on me too much. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do that here. But first, what I'm going to do, um, this is what I found to be easiest. You can do whatever works for you, but to make it easy to apply this vinyl on the cup is I'm going to peel the vinyl from the backing. I'm going to lay it right here. Okay, if I can get my finger off it. I'm going to cut the backing like this. And I'm going to cut another piece out like this. Okay. Take this out. And I'm going to reline this, which is the opposite way. So actually, I'm going to turn this way. I'm going to reline this on here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Although I'm anal and always want everything to be perfect. But so you're basically just going to lay it on here. And then you're going to also lay it on this side. Now what that's done is you're going to take your cup. Once again, you want your rise and grind to be on the bottom. So you're going to take your cup and you're going to set it where you can. But now you have a slot in here so you can get your image lined up. And if you need to, you can pull it off and reset it. So I'm going to make sure my rises and grinds on the bottom. I'm going to get this image in the middle and I'm going to try and, and I'm sorry if I'm blocking the camera here, but I'm going to try and line this up to the lip of the cup as much as I can, way up under the lip, and then lay this down. Now I can see already that my cut this time, because I hand cut it, was a little bit off, I believe. So now I'm going to undo the vinyl from one side if I think I got it right. And I'm going to kind of layer it around the cup, but you want to make sure you tuck it up under the lip there. You want to lay it flat so you get no bubbles. Kind of work it with your fingers. And then do the same to this side. Once again, making sure you're Tucking your edge under the lip of the cup. And because I have a gap here, see? Because I have a gap, I wasn't doing it smooth. I was rushing. Let me see if I can get that clearly on the camera. See that gap? Because I was rushing. My lines aren't meeting up, so the good thing about vinyl is you can carefully, hopefully, where's my tool? So I'm going to peel it back up some to that point. And now make sure I continue pressing it under, but also pulling it smooth. See, 
do that all the way around your vinyl meet up press it make sure you have it firm and smooth all the way through so you can see my line here my seam lines up This is the two-faced it cup. So that's it, folks. That was our uh, video on how to make a reusable sublimated coffee cup using Dollar Tree two for a dollar cups and um, Oracle 651 regular vinyl. Whatever kind of laminating sheets you want to use, but I'm using uh, Scotch thermal laminating pouches and um, a heat press, and that's basically all you need. And, and of course, an image and make yourself a nice uh, tumbler. And you can see the quality; it looks very nice, very bright and vivid. Uh, you know, it's got a nice sheen or gloss to it, um, and they come out pretty well, I think. So. Uh, the best we can do with what we have to work with but it's a fun thing to do and it's a cheap easy project to make you you know it's it's very inexpensive as far as cost so we can make a nice turnaround on these and um you know i'm sure there's better templates and better ways to do it but this is just the way i've seen how to do it and and know so i hope my video helped you out um I'm new to this, so like my video, subscribe to the channel if you can. Hopefully we'll make more videos in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to be able to bring you some more videos in the near future. And um, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, leave them below. I'll try to answer as best as I can. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Hey, guys. Uh, just a quick update on the cups here. So on the bottom, um, you see how I got the line around the edge there. Um, this line uh i figured out why in both of my cups i've done my template that i made was sized up right but i figured out why i'm coming up with the edge on the bottom and basically when you're putting the vinyl on as you watched in the video when i uh, applied it in the middle here on the opposite side of uh, of the seam of course in the middle where i started i tucked it up under the lip a little bit and when i when i sized up the template when i made it I measured from this part of the lip, you know, the very edge of the lip here down, not up under the lip. So when I put the vinyl on, I tucked it up under the lip, that millimeter or two, whatever it is, which is why I came up short on the bottom. So just a quick update, the template, it should be a good size if you use my template. If you don't, great, whatever template you use is fine. But if you do use my template, uh, it should be sized right. The problem I made was tucking the vinyl under the lip as I was adhering it. So just put it, you know, even, even down with the lip so it's not tucked. If it's even with here, it should still hide the top of the cup and come around. As you can see, the seam met perfectly. Um, I didn't place my transfer on quite right, which is why I have that little line there. But you can see there's no gap in between the vinyl that you can actually see cup. So, But the, the thing on the bottom is just because you don't need to tuck it under the lip. So just a quick update for the video. I hope uh, the video helps. If anyone was confused or had any more questions, feel free to ask. And I uh, hope the video helps everyone make these awesome cups. Uh, any questions, let me know. Thank you.